In this tutorial, we're going to talk about the next piece of the city puzzle, importing building data into City Engine. The best place to find building data is through a city's GIS portal. A great example is LA's Open Data Portal or New York's Open Data Portal. In both sites, you can download buildings as a shapefile and they also have height attached as a field. Another great place to get building footprints is OpenStreetMap. As we saw earlier, when we were importing data from OpenStreetMap, Redlands has a couple of buildings that are in that database. To import OSM data, navigate to the Data folder in the City Engine Essential Skills Project folder and drag and drop the Redlands California OSM file into the viewport. Make sure Buildings is the only object checked on. Uncheck Run Generate Bridges tool after import and then click Next. Accept the defaults on the remaining screens and then click Finish. The buildings come in at sea level, so are below the terrain. So we'll go ahead and align our buildings to the terrain. Right click Buildings and select Align Shapes to Terrain. In the Align Shapes dialog box, set Align Function to Translate to Average and set Height Map to Terrain DEM and then click Finish. Select the buildings that are still beneath the terrain. And then right click and choose to align shapes to terrain. And this time choose translate to maximum and click finish. Select the building footprints that fall outside of the terrain and our area of interest and choose to delete. Now let's rename the layer. Click on the layer in the scene window and in the inspector window, let's rename the layer Redlands Building. The OSM file will give you a limited data set depending on the availability of data. For Redlands, we have a few buildings, so we'll bring in extra data from our Redlands database. From the data folder in the navigator window, drag and drop the 3D CIM Redlands Geo database into the viewport. In the import wizard, uncheck select deselect all and check on building, then click next. Accept the defaults for the rest of the options and click Finish. The buildings appear under the terrain at sea level, so again we'll align these shapes to the terrain. The same settings should be saved from the previous alignment, but if not, right click the building and select Align Shapes to Terrain. In the Align Shapes dialog box, set the Align function to Translate to Average and the Height Map to Terrain DEM and then click Finish. We align to average to get the intersection of footprints on the terrain, but you can see some of the footprints are still hidden by the terrain. So to fix this, we will burn building footprints into the terrain. So right click the building layer and select all objects in the same layer. Then choose the align terrain to shapes tool from the toolbar menu at the top of the viewport. The align terrain to shapes dialog box comes up and you can see we also have the option to write cut and fill volumes to the attributes of the building data set. Click apply and then click close. Now that you have the shapes ready for your 3D city scene, you are ready to start applying procedural rules to generate models. Dragging and dropping a rule file is one way to apply city engine rules. For buildings, you'll use a different way. Right click building and choose assign rule file. After you do this, the Assign Rule dialog box will open. In the dialog box, navigate to the City Engine Essential Skills folder and to the Rules folder, and then select EssentialBuilding.CGA and click Open. Click on the Generate button and watch as the buildings are generated. Don't worry if your buildings don't have a height attribute because this rule randomizes height between a high and low value. In the inspector, you'll see there is a minimum height and a maximum height for the building height randomization. And these can be altered and the updates will be displayed in the scene. So if you have a height field or you're using the 3D CIM, you can map the building height directly by using the total height field in the data model or by mapping the height field to an attribute in your data. To do this, go to the 3D CIM group in the Attribute Inspector 
and click on the button to the right of the total height value. This opens the Attribute Connection Editor. Choose Layer Attribute and then select the layer you want to use as a source for your buildings. Then in the Select Source drop-down menu, choose the field with the height values you want to use. When we apply the rule, the roof forms are assigned randomly. So if I zoom here to the mall, you can see that it has a random roof form. To correctly model the mall's roof type, I can change the roof form parameter to flat. In the inspector window, you'll see that there's another group here called building display. And here there is a random color setting which lets you control the facades display and the roofs display. Right now it's set to texture by usage for facade display and texture by rooftop for roof display. But there's another option here for roof display under the building display group and it's called texture by aerial image. So select that and at first you notice that all of the rooftops turn white. That's because we need to specify which aerial image the rule will create roof textures from. So click the browse button and in the city engine essential skills project folder navigate to the maps folder and select imagery.png. As the image is loaded, notice that the building rooftops turn another color. We can fix that using the bounding box areas from the terrain. So click on the terrain DEM in the scene window and start to copy and paste the bounding numbers that you see here from the terrain DEM to the aerial image we loaded for aerial image mapping. To see the aerial image mapping again, right click on the building layer and choose to select all in the same layer. Repeat this process until you've copied all of the bounding information from the terrain DEM into the parameters underneath the aerial image mapping. As you copy and paste the numbers, you'll see a change in the textures on the rooftops. Once you copy and paste the last value, you'll start to see the aerial imagery being mapped as a texture for the rooftops of your buildings. This will give your buildings a more realistic look. Now we have some procedurally modeled buildings. These have realistic looking textures, but at a lower level of detail than we could get from a third party provider like Pictometry, CyberCity or Precision Lightworks. These are all Esri partners, and they can produce some very detailed and realistic modeled buildings. For example, Pictometry extracts its building models from oblique imagery. So you can see the difference between buildings created using procedural rules and buildings extracted from oblique imagery. We've included a database with some Pictometry buildings. In the Navigator window, expand the data folder if it's not already expanded and drag and drop the Redlands 3D PIC file geo database into the viewport. Accept the defaults for the import wizard and click finish. Once the buildings are imported, to be able to see them, let's right click and choose to align shapes to terrain. In the dialog box, change align function to translate to maximum and press finish. Notice that all the vertices can be seen on the pictometry buildings. In order to generate the models, we've included a rule in the rule folder here that will convert the shapes to models. Select the pictometry buildings by right clicking and choosing select all objects in the same layer. And then navigate to the rule folder and drag and drop the shape to model rule onto the buildings. This will render the buildings living a very clean result. If you turn off the shapes now in the viewport, you can see that the models remain. And if I turn the models off, you see that the buildings disappear. So while these buildings from Pictometry look very nice, they also increase your file size. 
Each image means a much larger file, so when you export to the web or to another program for rendering, or to a 3D web scene, the complex geometries you find on such buildings might exceed the file limit. If I zoom in here, you can start to see how detailed the pictometry buildings actually are. You can view just how many polygons are in your scene by going up to the scene settings and choosing information display. The total polygon count can be seen here, and if you make a selection of a building, the polygon count updates. So let's select a pictometry building. And have a look at the result here. And now let's select a building generated from the file geo database information. You can see the polygon count for the pictometry buildings is about 50 times more than the buildings generated from procedural rules. Best practice when it comes to buildings is if you have some familiarity with ArcGIS, you can start to process the attributes on your original data by adding extra information like building height, for example. Or you could adopt the 3D city information model, which provides a pre-configured geodatabase schema ready for you to populate with information about your building. The other advantage of using the 3D City Information Model is that City Engine 2014 ships with a library of CGA rules that are configured to work with the attributes in the 3D Sim. This library is shipped with the installer, and once you install City Engine, it appears here in the Navigator window. If I expand the esri.lib folder and come down here to the Rules folder, you can see the variety of rules that come ready for you to apply to your own data to quickly generate rich 3D content. If you want to use level of detail 3 buildings, like the buildings we saw with pictometry, have a good use case in mind, because the more detailed your buildings are, the larger the scene will become. In the next video tutorial, we'll look at how we can enrich our scene further by importing tree, data and other operational layers.